Eminem is one of the most famous and contentious rappers of a generation, consistently breaking boundaries with his explosive rhymes that often reflect his personal and professional life. His real name is Marshall Mathers, and here are just some of the intense details about his life. After his 15-year-old mother was left to raise him alone, Marshall's childhood involved moving between multiple public housing systems in Detroit and Kansas City, according to Rolling Stone. Frequently the new kid, Marshall started inhabiting an outsider stance at an early age. He flunked out of ninth grade three times before calling it quits, but he always loved English. In an interview with 60 Minutes, he admitted that he enjoyed reading the dictionary and demonstrated his mastery of the slant rhyme, freestyling words that rhyme with orange. I put my orange four inch door hinge in storage and ate porridge with George. <laughs> After dropping out of school, Marshall began to regularly alternate between writing, working, and performing. Being white in a predominantly black arena caused people to initially reject him only to be won over once he started rapping. Eminem's career grew, but it wasn't enough to pay the bills. He was living in a trailer when his EP Slim Shady landed in the lap of Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine of Interscope Records, who immediately tracked Eminem down and helped catapult him to fame. Eminem's lyrics frequently push boundaries, but one of his most infamous examples of crossing the line came in 2003, when a bootleg version of his song, We As Americans, surfaced with the lyric, I don't rap for dead presidents. I'd rather see the president dead. Dead presidents is slang for dollar bills, but according to CNN, Eminem saying that he, quote, rather see the president dead, set off a whirlwind of reports that the Secret Service was looking into the song as a standard response to investigate any possible threats against the president. Perhaps because the song didn't specify the president of the United States or mention George Bush by name, the Secret Service never took any real action against Eminem. Subsequent releases of the song, however, did censor out the word dead. Sadly, like many musicians before him, Eminem dealt with serious substance addictions. At his worst, he consumed 60 Valium and 30 Vicodin a day, plus multiple Ambien, according to Rolling Stone. Meanwhile, he ate regularly at fast food joints like Taco Bell and McDonald's, gaining a reported 80 pounds. One day at McDonald's, he overheard a conversation between two people debating whether or not it was actually him because of the extra weight. He claims this was a wake-up call for him, but it wasn't the one that would save his life. At his lowest point, Eminem was staying in bed all day and popping pills just to function. He hit rock bottom when he fell to the ground unconscious while trying to get out of bed one day. Later, doctors told him he'd consumed the equivalent of four bags of heroin. It took that hospital trip, a relapse, and a stint in rehab to get him sober, with help from his friend Elton John, who became his sponsor. Ever the artist, Eminem channeled his struggles into the album Recovery. As I settle into recovery, my brain moves faster, I'm, I, I think faster, my thoughts are sharper, I'm clearer. It just, it, there's a whole new awareness about me. In the first 13 years of his fame, Eminem encountered at least one major lawsuit per year, possibly spending several million dollars in legal costs. Several lawsuits came from immediate friends or family members, including his mother, his aunt, his uncle, his high school girlfriend, and a bully from high school. None of these lawsuits panned out the way the lawyers intended, according to the source. Other issues included a concealed weapon charge and an assault charge. Eminem pleaded guilty to both charges and was given two years probation. Finally, Eminem took out the big guns when going up against Apple twice for different incidents. They reached quiet settlements out of court. Besides the obvious financial burden, Eminem's enemies created considerable mental distress for the rap star. He started wearing a bulletproof vest just to frequent his recording studio, according to San Francisco Gate. Beyond all the obscenities and constructed stage identities, the one thread that runs authentic through all of Eminem's music is his love for his daughter, Haley Jade, who was born on Christmas Day in 1995. She's been the subject of her father's songs from her youngest years. Frequently, she's depicted as an anchor in the storm, the primary subject of her father's love that manages to keep him sane in an otherwise crazed world. According to Rolling Stone, when Eminem collapsed from a drug overdose, he admitted the hardest part was missing out on Christmas with his kids. Despite the fame, Haley apparently grew up pretty normal. On her Instagram page, you'll find her hanging out with friends, showing off outfits, and looking like any well-adjusted young woman. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nikki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.